Hey, welcome to another episode of the Diary of an Apartment Investor podcast. I'm your host, Brian Briscoe, and this is another episode and part of the Multifamily Brief Series. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about you know where we are in the economy. I think a lot of people who are looking, the Fed is still thinking they can get a soft landing. We've had almost runaway inflation. I say that tongue in cheek because I've lived in places where you know 9% inflation is actually good. But Anyway, we've had relatively high inflation for U.S. standards for the last two years, essentially, and the Fed has raised rates significantly to try to bring that inflation down. And what that's done is it's made capital more expensive, made lending more expensive. And because real estate is largely financed by debt, it's also brought prices down in a lot of areas, and it's made it more difficult for people to purchase new properties or existing properties or, or what have you. So looking around in the market, the effect of rising interest rates have had a lot of other ripple effects. I mean, businesses at the same time, they have an increased cost of capital. They're unable to borrow money for improvements, and that's affected payrolls for a lot of people. And on the flip side, the actual people involved housing costs have gone up. A lot of other costs have gone up. And so they're tightening their belts and they're they're pinching pennies a little more, which also has some drastic effects on the economy. It ends up being somewhat of a vicious cycle, which that's the intent is to stop consumer spending, stop this out of control inflation. And that's why the Fed has raised the rates. So it puts us in a situation where investing is a little more difficult now than it was a year ago. And definitely a lot more difficult than it was two years ago. A year ago, I think the biggest challenge was being able to pay the price that people were asking. And it wasn't really an issue of what's my cost of capital? Is this, can I actually purchase this property anymore? Something I was thinking about earlier today, and this was inspired by a LinkedIn post from Jonathan Twombly. He's the host of the Apartment Investor Club podcast and has much, much more experience in this industry than I do. But anyway, I was thinking about something I read in Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits book, you know, whatever the official title is of that one. I'll defer to Google searches or experts on that one. But his Seven Habits for Highly Effective People book, he talks about a situation where, you know, a bunch of business leaders were in a similar situation. The economy wasn't doing well or their sector of the economy wasn't doing well. And what they decided to do is take a proactive approach. Habit one for Stephen Covey is proactivity, but they decided to take this proactive approach to their business. And they got together and they had a realistic conversation over what is the state of the market, the economy, and our position in the economy in, in our certain field. After day one, they come out with this you know pretty bleak picture of what's going on, and they come back to the table and they start talking about, okay, understanding the economy, now what can we do? Okay, what can we do to still compete? What can we do to gain more market share? What can we do to establish our brand or entrench ourselves in our current industries? And they were able to chart a path forward through the fog and through the haze to get to a spot to where they could actually flourish and thrive in the economy they were in. And I think when we're looking at multifamily, there's a lot of similarities there. It's harder to buy. A year ago, it's December 2022 right now. A year ago, I got a loan on an apartment complex at 3.7%, 80% loan to cost. And it was one of the easiest loans I've ever applied for. You know, I called up the director of the multifamily lending at this small bank and I said, hey, can I get another loan? And she said, yep. And the next question was, hey, you already have all of my documents from the last loan. What else do you need? Well, I've got all of your documents, just fill out this form. And a couple months later, lo and behold, we had a couple million dollars in the bank from them. So that was it. And a year has passed. And the most recent acquisition we had was October. So it's about six weeks ago. It was the last week of October. And our loan was at 7.5%. Okay, that's more than double the interest rate. And throughout the process, it was a lot more difficult. When we started the loan application, rates were around 5%, and they just kept on creeping up and up and up. So there are a lot of difficulties in the environment. What I would say is do the same thing that Stephen Covey recommended and take a proactive approach. Sit, look at the economy, look at where multifamily fits in the economy, 
and figure out a way to navigate what's going on. And a couple of thoughts that I had, you know, things that I think are going to work is going back to a long-term investment philosophy. In the last four or five years, because cap rates have been compressing, you know, meaning prices have been just going bonkers, because of, of this, people have been able to buy, do absolutely nothing to a property or even run it into the ground, turn around and sell it at a profit. And they're able to do this in 12 to 18 months and give, you know, 20, 30, 40% average returns to their investors. You know, it was very, a very short term, very flip heavy mindset in the apartment community. People who are advertising five to eight year holds were turning around and selling in a year and a half, two years. So right now, I think we need time to be on our side. So if you're buying right now, I don't think there's any reason not to buy with the long run in mind, buy with an eight to 10 year horizon instead of a two to three year horizon. you be prepared to operate the property. And here's where operations are now going to be super important. And interestingly enough, I said the same thing three years ago. You know, this is where operations are going to now become more important because we can't expect the economy to keep on growing. So I might be wrong, but end of the day, I think this is still a very safe approach to investing right now. Be prepared to operate the property for five to 10 years. To be able to make the lending work, put a little more cash down at closing. Okay, that's going to increase your debt service coverage ratio, make lenders a little more likely to work with you. And end of the day, you know, you're going to have a little more cash flow to be able to respond to activities. And speaking of responding, you know, keep a healthy amount of cash in reserve, all right? Especially if you're getting a floating rate loan and you have to have a rate cap involved. So when that rate cap expires, if rates are still relatively high, depending on your DSCR, lenders may want you to put another big chunk of change down for rate cap insurance. So definitely squirrel money aside, maybe make the hard decision, withhold some of the distributions if you have some and keep a healthy amount of cash in reserve and plan for the future. And last thing is just watch for buying opportunities. You know, there have been some people who've picked up properties who haven't been able to manage them well. And now the place in the economy we're at, a lot of these people may be offloading these properties which will be good for you. And hopefully you can pick some things up at a discount. End of the day, I'm going to go back to my line that I say a lot. Uh, it's, it's on just about every LinkedIn post I make. Don't wait to invest in real estate. Invest in real estate and wait. And I think that's going to be true forever, I hope. Hey, if you like that episode, make sure to subscribe. But more importantly, if you haven't joined our multifamily educational community yet, which we call a tribe of titans, you are missing out. Get 30 days free by clicking the link in the description to this episode or go to thetribeoftitans.info and we'll see you there.